Hello. I am uh, coming to you by video that I've recorded earlier today. We want to offer these for the near future as an opportunity for us all just to gather our hearts together on the midweek time, the time when we'd normally gather in person, have a meal around the tables at the church, then go to our our separate rooms for the instruction with the children as well as the the devotion time and prayer meeting for the adults since we can't do that now out of deference to one another and to the civil magistrates during this uh, time of concern over the COVID-19 virus we uh, we want to do something in that place and that's these sorts of devotions. So Pastor John and I are going to probably alternate in doing this. We'll see. But tonight I just simply want to address what I did in Sunday morning sermon again, and that being comfort. I doubt that anyone who's listening would debate that uh, comfort is a wonderful thing. We need comfort. We need comfort in every possible situation of life. The turns of life often are so, so, uh, so distressing that that comfort is is where we rest and what we cling to. It's the comfort of the Lord, ultimately, that is our our best friend in this life. I want to read you a passage of scripture from Isaiah chapter fifty one first, and then I want to read you a portion from that book that I spoke about on Sunday. Spiritual Comfort by John Calhoun, the Scotsman of the 19th century, a favorite of mine. But first, the Isaiah passage, beginning with God's word. Chapter 51 begins this way, with the Lord calling his people, Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Then he calls them to look to their fathers, remember those who have gone before them. And then we move on down to verse 9, and he says this. Now, this is the prophet calling upon the Lord, as we ought daily to call upon the Lord. Awake, awake. Put on strength, O arm of the Lord. And who is the arm of the Lord but the Lord Jesus Christ? Awake as in the days of old, the generations of old. Was it not you who cut Rahab in pieces, who pierced the dragon? Was it not you who dried up the sea? Remember the Exodus? God drying the sea, pushing back the walls of water. The waters of the great deep. Was it not you who made the depths of the sea a pathway for the redeemed? to cross over, so the ransomed of the Lord will return and come with joyful shouting to Zion, and everlasting joy will be there on their heads. They will obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Notice, they will obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and sighing will flee away from them when they come to Zion. Oh. Zion is a reference to the church, but it's also a reference to that place where God gathers with them, God with us. There'll be no gladness, no joy, no, there'll be sorrow and sighing if we don't go to him. Then verse 12 says this, I, even I, am he who comforts you. Who are you that you are afraid of man who dies it's a good question for us, isn't it? Who are we to be afraid of man or even the things of man, the diseases of man? When he, even he, he says, if I, even I am, remember the I am, goes back to Exodus. God reminding that he is the one who was and is and shall evermore be. He's the covenant faithful one. I, even I, am he who comforts you. Who are you that you're afraid of man? 
who dies. That's where we have to live, is looking to our Lord. But how do we look to the Lord? Well, it's through faith, right? We know that. Whatever is not of faith is sin. So listen to John Calhoun, a spiritual comfort. He says this, O sinner, and that's ultimately our problem. That's the reason we're distressed. That's the reason we can't be comforted in the midst of trials and tribulations and diseases is because we're sinners and we need, we need to look away from ourselves. O sinner, the Lord Jesus, who is infinitely excellent and amiable, immensely full of grace and consolation, now offers himself and all that he is and has to you as an undone sinner of mankind. And with inexpressible tenderness, he invites you to accept him and to trust and delight in him. He says to sinners in general who read and hear his blessed gospel, come, you, buy and eat. Yes, come, buy with wine and milk, without money and without price. Hearken diligently to me and eat that which is good. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Even the sure mercies of David it will be impossible for you to experience true consolation until you comply with this gracious, cheering invitation. How do we comply with that gracious, cheerful invitation? Well, it's by trusting in the Lord. It's through faith. Come, hear, receive. And that's what the Lord's calling us to tonight in the middle of this week. Still one more time, turn our eyes off of the things of this world. Turn our eyes off of self. Turn our eyes off of the possible cures. It's wonderful, isn't it? Right now we're hearing that possibly plasma transferred from people who've been sick with this disease and now they have an immunity to it taken given to those of us who may be sick with it or may uh, be well, but to keep us from being sick with it. Technology, modern medicine is wonderful, but our faith can't be there. It has to be in the Lord. And so I want to call you to faith tonight one more time. Not in faith, but faith in Christ Jesus, the one who gives us hope, the one who gives us comfort in the midst of these trials and and tumultuous times. Let's pray together, okay? Father, we thank you for the occasion to commune with one another, even through this, this very artificial means of the internet. But we're thankful for it, and ask now that you would do that which we need most these days, and that is give us more faith, that we might more firmly be fixed upon our Savior Jesus, that our union with him would be more fully realized, and there we'll find comfort. Come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We ask you to increase our faith and increase our rest as we lean upon Jesus tonight. We pray in his name. Amen. Till we're together again, even by this means, pray that God would bless you. Good night.